Meeting to order at 4.06 p.m. There's an agenda for that one. Okay, hopefully Laura, and I, I know Laura said she was going to try to make it. I didn't hear from Kerry. Matt, I think, is still recovering, yes. so I wouldn't expect to see him. And Lori had to go put another fire out, but Lori is right here. No, Lori's not right here, but she should be back shortly. So um, first thing is addition solutions to the agenda, and we have a really just short agenda. It's, it's to discuss um, our student pupil counts and the budget and the meeting summary content. Um, members of the public, you'd be the only one. Kind of, you more staff. Yes, yeah. more st <laughs> happen to be walking by. But thank you for coming <laughs> to our wonderful meeting. And review and approve the minutes of the January 7th meeting, which was last week. I'll entertain a motion to do that. So moved. Okay, Rick moved. All second. Barry seconds. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Now, for the reason we're here. And I didn't bring my school board bag, but you're going to want to sit over there. Because we're going to we're gonna have show and tell today. You do? You do. <laughs> okay. Bill, help me with these two numbers. Laura, you can help me with these two numbers because I didn't write them down. So when we put together our budget, Lori had worked out a projected pupil count for us of uh, 282. Two, that was based on last year's count. Right, 282. So then the law states that on December 15th, they're supposed to supply to every supervisory union the student counts. The, the Department of Education chose to ignore the law, and they said they'll get to it when we get to it. There's an agenda right there, Laura. So anyways, just so you know, I'll fill you in. We're, we're projecting 282 on a student count for River Valleys based on all the information last year and everything Lori could get. Is that total, total number of students or like total secondary? That's the equalized pupil. Right. Equalized. That's not ADM. Those are two different right. things. Yeah. Which is calculated how, Lori? The equalized pupil is counted, calculated on the ADM, a two-year average. And then waiting. And then all the waiting that goes, goes into, into it. it. Correct. And the, so what happened was Lori kind of took what had been done in the past, and the the membership, the the uh, the daily roster she gets or, or student count from both schools, mm -hmm. and came up with the number of 282. So that's what we based all our stuff on. Laura, the important thing for you to know is that the Vermont Department of Education chose to ignore the law. And although they were supposed to have the numbers out by December 15th, they chose to ignore that because maybe they had more fun things to do like chase Governor or <laughs> Secretary French's pipe dreams and spend a lot of time on that. So Lori got on the 8th or the 9th, the 9th. a number from the Department of Ed saying that our count would be? Uh, 264.86. So we lost. And Lori said she thought it would be close, but we actually, if you look, it's 18 students. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference of 18 students. So, and that's important because our numbers are based on, we get so much, although they don't call it a per pupil block grant, when you multiply the number of pupils by a number and that's your income, obviously we have 18 less of them. And the numbers in the $10,000 price range, here's $180,000 difference between what we were expecting for income and now what we can expect, although the numbers have not yet been finalized and set in stone, but this is a much closer estimate, and this is a number we should have gotten back on December 15th. Do we do another reason for the difference? Like just No, I'm going to go over that oh, in a second. Oh, okay. okay. So does everybody understand yeah. why we're here? Yeah. So I just felt that before we sent the pamphlet out and stuff, because this number makes such a difference, that we ought to have a quick meeting and discuss it. You want to know why the number's different? Yes. Here so we here we go. I've been practicing. Uh, hello. Okay. So, so it says, hello. That was actually us just experimenting to see if this would all work in these markers. And they got a whole bunch of these in here if you want one. So the ADM law, by law, is required to be submitted 1215. Again, it's cool that some people can just ignore certain pieces of the law. I want to all do that. 
So, you know, everybody just pick a law you want to ignore and ignore it, I guess, and it's okay if you're in education department. So let's say three years ago, you're at 100 pupils, real pupils, okay? These are the students that we're educating, both primary and secondary. And then the following year, you drop 10 pupils and you're down to 90. So it's a real drop of 10 students, correct? Everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. But because of Hold Harmless, HH, the state said you'll never drop more than 3.5%. And this came back, I even think during Act 60, because some schools would have huge drops and it wouldn't give the school time to really adjust to the huge drop. Rick probably remembers discussing that. So what if you use the Hold Harmless, you, from 100, you can't go below 96.5 students, okay? So you really only have 90 students, but they're saying you have 96.5. Does everybody get that? That is clear as mud. Can you guys see okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's say the following year you go from your real number of 90 students mm -hmm. down to 85. That's another five student drop. But Hold Harmless says, again, you can't go below 3.5. So they're starting at 96.5, the previous year's Hold Harmless, and then they drop you, in, and we figured this out, the newspaper person and I, neither one of us probably passed math very well. We came up with 3.3. So really, you're looking at 93.2 students that what we were counting, even though we only had 85. Is that as clear as mud for everybody? Yeah, as clear as can be. Okay, so what happened this year, part of all this Act 64 and all these other laws was... 64 is water. You mean 46, 46. Is that me? Oh, man. Sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. No problem. It's saying that this is bogus. Oh. <laughs> That's from me. <laughs> so anyways, we would have... Instead of starting at 93.2, the law said that we're going to go back to the actual student count previous to the year you went together before you formed your new okay. group. We didn't know that. So we went back to, and remember, these aren't real numbers. These are just 100 was an easy number to start with. So we went back to 85. So really, you lost like eight students in, in this example. We're double that. So that's what happened to us. The, we were building phantom students on phantom students. I knew the leg legislature didn't like that. That was a big problem with the, like the Burlingtons of the world. Um, so what happened was he said, okay, well, we're gonna draw a line and everybody starts here. I'm sorry, where was that point where we started? This year. During this year. Act 46. Okay. During the, the, law, we weren't, we weren't the law change. Okay. You weren't aware of this? I, I did not see it in the law. I knew that they didn't like the phantom students and the phantom students, uh -huh. but I thought it was all going to... Yeah. Now, you got to remember, too, there's a few things, and Laura can tell you more about this, but I've seen it before. Like, you know, you go in in the morning, there's a stack of papers like this mm -hmm. thick, and these are what we're going to vote on today, and here's all the laws. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got there because the education department spent all session interviewing people, having hearings, doing all this stuff, and then it's not a legislator that actually writes the law. There's an, an employee of the state who writes the law with all the input, submits it to the committee, the committee reads it. Ha, you know, if they really are reading everything that's put in front of them, then they're, they're not sleeping, and I don't think that's the case. And then they go vote on it. And then even though the law says what it wants, like the law says the ADM has to be done by 1215, that's what the legislators intended, because that's what they voted on. The Ed Department just said, well, we can't fulfill that. And there's been uh, many times where there's been different things that have been required to be done, and different departments just decide we're not going to do it. Um, Laura had a, Laura and Ann Manwaring one time had a study, a rural waiting study, and it was law, right? And then the, didn't the Ed Department decide not to do it? Yes. Because they it's, said... It's coming in November. Yeah. But it was supposed to be done two years ago. Yeah. So this is what happens. And so things come in that we're not prepared for. And, and I, you know, I don't think there's anybody here on the board. And there's, I mean, how are these guys ever going to keep track of all this? It gets really confusing. Seems like a sneaky way not to give us our eight cents. Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to. In the end, there's not enough money probably to right. give everybody that merge. Well, I know, but I know this, is, this, is, this has been around for a couple of years. We just, I, I guess we all missed it. So it's... I, I'm looking at a piece of this. Okay. So I thought we were able to hold on to the hold harmless, but it we is are. a three-year phasing right. out of the hold harmless. And so this is our second year. 
first year. Second. I think we're able to hold on to the whole harmless going right. forward, but the way they calculate the whole the, harmless the, the is the starting change. Point. Right. But are we in the, f I think there's a three year correction cycle okay. with that. Oh, so we're going to get hit for two more years. Well, it will still always go back to the actual right. um, equalized people to be calculated. Instead of the whole harmless calculated people. So, for instance, your equalized pupil is coming in at 264, but the actual was eight students less than that. So, next year, that's what it'll be calculated on. On 256. Right. right not. See, see, see it uh, goes back we, to the actual. Do, so they're not building right. a phantom. On so if we didn't, if we didn't become a, a unified school district, none of us would have hold harmless. So we would all be down another eight students, you know, and I don't know what the division is, but we've been figuring everything's roughly 60-40. So in Dover, say out of those eight students, you know, maybe five of them are, are Dover and three of them are Wardsboro. Now, remember, too, one of the things is that um, there have been some changes because it used to be the schools directly report to the state of Vermont. Now we report from the school to the central office who reports to the state of Vermont. And Lori has checked all the numbers and she's gone back to both principals and administrators to make sure their numbers are right. Because it does seem like a big drop, but when you look at it that it's not just this number, you know, it's this number you're looking at, it, it tends to make a lot more sense. I know in Dover two years ago we got hammered and Bill's last year's principal we were like, boy, you're, gonna, you're setting Matt up to look really good because you've got this huge class graduating from 12th grade, there was like 20 of them, and you only had like eight going into the middle school, so our you know tuition had been way out of balance for a year. Yeah. The following year, we were doing great, but eventually, because them going back to this number, it catches up to you. So, oh, Rich, I just want, no, I just wanted to say to follow up, I am having the principals recheck. They did check it once, and then we sent it back up to the state so we can open it back up for certification and as as rich said this is far from finalized this number will change it's not going to stay 264 i guarantee 100 percent, because not all of the in order for the um ratio to be figured um the equalization you need everybody in and not all of the school districts have reported in yet right so that ratio is going to change. So, it, you know, it's not going to change dramatically at this point, but I am having the principals check, and um, I got a message from Tammy, which I haven't had time to deal with yet. <laughs> and then um, at Lori O'Hearn is checking Dover's. So there may be, you know, one or two students that got missed or something like that. And then can you just explain Well, that hang on. Lori Laura had a question. So I don't think the student count is going to be variable, right? I mean, it'll be the yield and the spending, the dollars. No, the equalized peoples are not set. Right. Because are. remember, they take our number, they take whatever number we have, and then it goes to the state, and it gets divided into the, after it gets weighted, and then gets divided into the 100,000 kids, then it gives us an actual number. Right. And if all the districts haven't reported, they don't know how many actual students there are. So some of the other factors would have been also, um, you know, there were, your poverty rate went down a little bit. That accounted for some of the waiting, you know. Same thing like what Rich is saying here. There's little pieces that play into it, um, but this is the bulk of it. And e this, the, even if the number, the two, I have to go back to the other page. I mean, I don't, it's, we've always had that vary a little bit when we put our budget together, at least in Dover. And it's always been a little bit different number. But it's been within a couple. It's never been this far off. It's never been eight or ten because we've never had to worry about cap recapturing the phantom students from the previous years. And basically what we've done is we've given back the phantom students. It's, I guess, the easiest way to, to boil down. Mm -hmm. If we could count all the phantom students from the previous year, we'd be in much better shape. Okay? Laura's very confused looking. No, I'm actually very concerned you would looking. Be, I would think you'd be well, it's not, as, it's not all as bad as we all think. Well, it's not. not I'm concerned because, <laughs> right, I'm right. thinking about, like, all around. <laughs> no, well, you got, your dope, you got your River Valley's hat on. Today. I, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm concerned here. I'm just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah. 
it's gonna okay, be so it's gonna be bad. Are, is everybody good on the, the how we got to this, this, the pupil count? Not, okay, not at all, but. Well, 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 not comfortable that you accept it, but understand it. No, I don't understand it really. No. Okay, so go ahead. Let's. What do we need to? Okay, so wh where's our line in the stand? Is our actual ADM from last year? So your the two ADM counts um, mm -hmm. combined together. Well, one is last year, right? I mean, the top one is last year. Right. I didn't send that out to everybody, so oh, not sorry. everybody has that form because I didn't want to get lost in real numbers. Oh, okay. Well, we, huh. can, we can circle That's, away then. There's the quote of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well they're, 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 they're going to change anyway. But right. That's why. <laughs> so, the, I can just say them. So, yeah. l last year, let's just say it's, it's, it's 270 is what the number you have in here, right? 270 is the two-year average from mm -hmm. the previous, from the previous year, year. Mm -hmm. right? 262 and change, or decimals, is the average from for this upcoming year. Correct. Okay. Yes. And then okay, that so where is the line in the sand? So that 262 then runs through the weighting. Okay, they, they subtract the mm -hmm. money for the pre-K because they count them as one and then they subtract out the... Um, 0.54. 0.54, and then they add the secondary, they add the 0.13, and then your poverty and your state place students. Um, that was another place that was dropped. There was two point, and if you look at the bottom of that sheet, 2.47 state place students. You, they didn't count them this year because they weren't here. So it's, you know, it's it's pieces of it. It's not. And did they lower the poverty weighting from something to something a little lower? Um, no. I no, we had less poverty. You had less poverty. So this is the ADMs. So it's ADMs to equalize pupils. The two-year average then works through. So I'm not sure what you mean by line in the thing. Well, I, I guess, I mean, we can lose, did you say 3.5%? Is that, was that the number? That was the hold harmless number. That's hold on harmless the equalized number. Okay. pupil number. Lose 3.5%, right. okay. Now, from the actual student counts that you have here, it looks like we've lost eight students. And well, those numbers weren't actual student numbers, were they? Those were the, those were your, with the whole harmless included in them. Well, the the two year average, the two sixty two, runs through the the um, equalized pupil calculation. So you can see fiscal year 18's equalized pupil was two ninety two, right? Okay. And then, uh, I'm sorry, it's the other 18. Did I say 18? Did I say 19? It's okay. Keep going. And then 19 equalized pupils that were inflated because of the 3.5% were 282. Okay? What were 18 again, Lori? 18 was 292.38. And 19 was 282? 0.15. And then your, if you look at your actual equalized pupil for <coughs> this year, it was 274.11. And then, so that 3.5% is on the 274.11. I'm just trying to figure how if we went from 270 to 262, um, being a simple man, how we lost 17 students. Well, some of them were not were phantom students, correct? Some, yeah. Rick, because we started from the 282 number, because that's the only number we had. Right. Because we didn't have anything from the state. I didn't have this 272. I mean, I didn't have the 262. I didn't have the the 274 number until the night. So I was using the 282 because I knew. You know, I knew Wardsboro's numbers fairly good because I've dealt with those the most. And their, you know, ADM counts were coming in fairly close, right? Not too far off. Yep. No, no, it's, it's okay. Move on. I'm going to take it. It's going to take me too long to figure out. So I think, though, we, we don't have yet a real line in the sand that we will fight for a number because Lori still wants to check with both administrators and then we need to see what the state's actually using for numbers. So she'll compare the raw data that the state has 
from the real numbers that Matt and Tammy supply and make sure those numbers are the same. And then after that, that, that would be the line in the sand. Whatever, whatever Lori and the two administrators feel is the actual number of students that we're counting on, and it's December 1st, right, is usually the count cut off? Or no, November? November 15th. 15th. Right? It's 20 days that the kids are counted. Yeah, um, so once once I, you get those, that will be kind of, that's a line in the sand, right. I think. That's what we will say are, are our students. I mean, I've been pushing since Christmas, to be oh. honest. I've been pushing really, really oh, hard because- I, I hope you don't think that we're feeling like this no, no, is no. anything to do with you whatsoever. No, but I'm just telling you, yeah. I have been, it's frustrating for me yeah. because I have- pushing, I can't imagine how frustrated you are because um, I know you were asking for them when we were talking yeah. Back in November, because you had earlier, because you earlier. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And it's you know, each at some point the state is going to freeze the data, and so I'm going to continue to push before they freeze that to see if we can. If there's kids missing, we need to get them in like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but honestly, that's what sure. it is. It's tomorrow, because they are going to they at Vasbo. They said they were going to freeze the data most likely on Wednesday to Friday, somewhere in there. On top of getting our budget yeah. done, West River right. budget, and no, Wyndham's and Marlboro's, and now I feel awful for you, Lori. It's, I mean, this is just not. Well, kind of it's just been a it's been a terrible year. There's there's too many things going on, um, and the state isn't able to keep up with it, and so things start to like this start to happen, you know. And and I really can't even blame the Ed department because I'm sure, you know, they're trying to figure out how to make these formulas work and how to set up the spreadsheets. They understaffed. I mean, I completely understand. Well, and so is everybody. I mean, no, not like this. Not for the size of the work. I mean, that is there. so I explained to Bill that the other day that when you have a question, you know, a legal question or something like that, you call who do you call? The lawyer, right? And does the lawyer get right back to you because they're being paid, right? So I have one person that I can contact for this kind of information at the AOA. One person, who is Brad James. Yeah. And it is, there are 60 SUs in the state trying to get his attention. So it's unsustainable. And then he's got to fill out the forms and make it all work besides answering the question. Yeah. No, and again, I, I didn't, but yeah. sometimes you wonder what when AOE can go do a three month study on something that nobody asked for but the. I want to point out that that is not. Um, Primarily, the AOE that is doing that study. There are a number of different departments and agencies. But then they could have loaned them help. Right. And they could have this. I am not defending it <laughs> at all. I just want to so say you had a question, or did you have a comment? Yes, I do. Um, it's for you and Lori. Uh, in the past, has this number uh, ever been late before? Is that something that typically happens or occasionally happens? It's happened like a couple days. A couple of days. I haven't ever seen it go past like the 17th. No, you've, we've always had it by the time we were ready to set budgets at the end of December, beginning of January. Well, mm -hmm. Dwight just made a valid point. Mm -hmm. This is the worst possible year right. in which to ha not have it. We're losing a month of use both ends. Plus, we have to get our budget done quicker because we want to, we want to have it done so we can present it to the voters at the annual meeting. So, yeah. so I, I have another question. Don't get mad at me. No, I'm not mad at you. Might be the. Um, is there anything that would be helpful right now to have happen? No, I mean, I think the worst thing has happened is happened. happened to and once Lori gets her numbers and she confirms them with what the state has and gets that locked in, where it'll be where we will need a lot of help is if Lori gets some different numbers and they say it's too late now, that's when we're going to need help. I mean, that's a big question that you're asking. Um, but for this particular situation, Rich is exactly right. Uh, until if they freeze the numbers and we can't update them, then that would be. So if the numbers are frozen, and if we find we have a different number, how could we have a different a number? Different oh, it's base the, number, the number. It's the high schools. That's what it mm -hmm. is. Well, it's also students in the building. <laughs> no, we. Okay. You know, when we send the um, data back out to the principals, um, they're checking them over, and if they find some missing students in the data then we need to make sure that gets back up to the state and what that re what that um, entails is that the uh, state has to decertify our information which of course makes the, the Brad James crazy right because now 
we pulled we pulled our data out, and then we have to re-upload and recertify. Um, Richard, I have one more question for Lori. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. Um, and I recognize, and it's for Lori and Bill, um, I recognize that this is also a big question. And so I'm asking you, um, putting on your experience hat, um, you know, what's, what is happening at this time of year when these processes are being developed typically. So from your past experience and what you know, is there anything that you anticipate could happen right now that would make this worse besides freezing the rate, freezing the numbers? Oh, I want to answer that one. <laughs> that could make this worse, meaning this. Yeah. Uh, like, what are the next things that are coming in that you're like, oh, that would make it worse, <laughs> time-wise for you? Um, oh, well, time one of the or? one of the issues that's not here yet is the um, what we refer to as the three-year comparison, which of course won't have all three years because there's no comparison. But um, that tax form is mandated by law that it's in your town reports, um, and that supposedly was supposed to come out Friday or Saturday, but Saturday when I was uh, in, it was not in yet. So, um, so we'll, we'll just ignore that law like they ignored it for 715. <laughs> well, it, it creates so a, a bottleneck, up. you know, of getting reports out. Okay. But of course they have to freeze the, the equalized pupils before they can create that form. Mm -hmm. So you can see how this snowballed. Well, and then the other thing too, because we'll be in a holding pattern, is when until the legislature decides a tax rate and a, and a yield and all the the grants. I mean, our, we, we put together a budget, but it's not a real budget because it still changes. And you know that's why in Dover we used to postpone voting on the budget until after the legislature left Montpelier because that's the only time you have real numbers. And last year we waited. Were we the 28th of May we met? I mean, like almost the last day, and we still got surprised because of the governor's, you know, um, buy down of the tax rate. So there's always things that come up, and, and even though we, well, the best we can do is give people an approximate tax rate that we can shoot for. Last year we all undershot it by a lot, and not because of anything we did. It was because the governor decided to, you know, buy down the tax rate. And the year before as well. Don't forget that happened the year before. Too. Yeah, but the year before it happened, before re the stat the reports had to go in, so we were able to use real numbers last year. So we didn't under we in Do at least in Dover we got the tax rate we discussed at town meeting. Other towns may have, have gone lower because of the buy down, but it, you know that was you know in Dover we were able to take care of that. And right. We didn't move as much as we, or we didn't propose to transfer as much. Okay, so I want to get to so. You know, we were looking at trying to do the same tax rate as last year, and that was what we were basing everything on. And we felt comfortable with the budget. So one of the first things when I found this out, and um, Rick and I had gotten an email, I, I asked Bill and Lori to think about the budget. And was there anything in the budget that stuck out that we could easily chop out of the budget? And maybe we go back and revote a budget. And if you look at the budget, you know, for again, because we don't have a, we don't have experience running it as one school, we have an experience running it as two schools. Um, they we, they felt very confident, and I think we looked at the budget, and we may be able to shave. And it's funny, Rick joked about it. You know, we've gone through the budget one time in Dover. We stayed till after midnight, and by the time we got all done, you know, we saved shaved twenty thousand dollars. We took a hundred dollars from this thing that. and five hundred from <laughs> here. <laughs> Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> so it, it, I don't really think there's a whole lot of places in the budget we want to try to shave. And, and I know, Dwight, you've talked about tuition before. And tuition is the last place I worry about because if we don't spend the, the money in the tuition line item, that doesn't mean we go spend it elsewhere. It, it's still there. And the following year, we can just turn it back into uh, either the reserves or we use it to offset the following year's taxes. I'd much rather, especially with Act 68, now we would never do this under Act 60, but under Act 68 I'm okay with having a surplus because it doesn't have to go anywhere. It stays with us and we can roll it back into any reserves. But I would hate to be short because I'd hate to then next year be looking at, you know, another fan, hold harmless phantom student drop plus 
we under budgeted secondary by a hundred thousand dollars and would have to make that up also that could really kill us so I, I think we if everybody's agreeable I think we should keep the budget where it's at so the only other place we can really make adjustments is in our transfer um, you know what we try to take out of the reserves to put in to help buy down the rate so here's just some numbers too because the other thing I what really scared me and what kept me awake for two nights was all I could hear were people in town saying I knew we never should have voted for that merger because look what it did in my tax rates it's up six cents this didn't save us a penny there's still people that think all this was about was saving money I think we have a really good program I think we're really moving in some creative ways but that was my big fear and because the budget's being voted voted by ballot I, w I was concerned about that so just some of the things that because we have the merger um, you know we get to keep our small school grant one hundred fifty six thousand one hundred eighty dollars it was ninety thousand in Wardsboro and roughly fifty sixty something in Dover if we weren't merged for next year we would not have that money so not only would we be losing on the hold harmless we'd be losing that um, we also have um, if you got to remember too that last year the two schools bought down the rates um, to the tune of 280 I think it's on this sheet oh I'm sorry I was going a different direction so anyways they're just so you know everybody's taxes seem to be going up this year so and I won't mention the name because they'll have to tell them tonight but there's a school in the West River District that's looking at 21 cent tax increase this year and some of the reasons so some of the things by us combining we get to keep our small school grant which was on the other sheet we do get some hold harmless okay it doesn't go to the as high a number as we thought but we're looking at about 8.4 in hold harmless and at a yield of about ten thousand one hundred thirty dollars a pupil there's ninety one thousand almost a hundred thousand dollars we're getting in hold harmless if we weren't combined we would lose that we have an incentive of eight cents on the tax rate if we didn't combine we wouldn't have that and last year remember we had governor scott's one-time buy down and that was seven cents in wardsboro and five cents in dover so we're fighting we're fighting that this year we're fighting the a little bit of the hold harmless and i just put the transition grant we got sixty thousand dollars and the and i kind of feel funny a little bit with that because if we didn't combine we wouldn't need it but it did help us with some things that other expenses and think of if we hadn't combined and the state ed report said that we were going to combine we would be doing all this without that too so we'd be looking for another sixty thousand dollars in our budget plus somewhere so i think um i think what we so what i want to look at was last year um brought the wrong sheet of paper oh and roughly one cent on the on the tax rate is equal to about twenty five thousand dollars in money so for every twenty five thousand roughly we take out of the reserve and put into the income other than taxes that is equivalent to a, a twenty five thousand dollars in budget so I didn't write this down So Laura, you estimated our tax rates at, I, I don't seem to have that sheet you gave me with the tax rate earlier. Um, so just to recap last year's, what you had put in um, was 272, so it was $81,000 from Wardsboro, you remember that, so and then 197 from uh, Dover. Um, so if you were to put in $300,000 in reserves, um, based on everything that we know, I'm going to say this disclaimer every time I speak now, every, based on what I know Saturday morning, um, then your tax rate um, are, would be 
a dollar fifty three for wards for uh, Dover, sorry, and a dollar forty two for Wardsboro. Now when you compare that to the actual that you saw on your tax bills, okay, the actuals you saw on your tax bills were a dollar forty six for Dover and a dollar thirty seven for Wardsboro. So that's seven and five, right? Cent increase. But if you compare it to um, if the governor had not put in that one time money, then your tax rate would have been 151 for Dover and 143 for Wardsboro. So it would have been two cents on Dover's tax rate and actually a reduction of a cent for Wardsboro. And, you know, like I have the three year comparison here that was published in work. I don't have Dover's, but I have Wardsboro's um, three year comparison that we put in town report. It was a dollar forty-three, and of course it dropped to a dollar thirty-seven because of the one-time money. So, when you're comparing it to what actually happened, um, it's really not that much of an increase. But of course, people will see their actual tax bills and compare it. But as long as it, we can explain that it was well, this what percentage of the people in these towns actually pay their real tax bill. That I don't know. That is the residents or the in each town. What was right. the actually paid? Residents or the well, city. yeah, because all your second homeowners residents, and all your yeah. commercial properties pay. They're going to see the full. Yeah, but that. But well, the, no, they're seeing a dollar fifty one. Oh, right. exactly. And that, right, and they and that has nothing to do with our budgets. What we vote yeah. zero to yeah. do with our budgets. So and there's the income sensitivity <coughs> too. Well, that's well, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. Is, you know, I mean, how many people in each of these towns actually pay? Because we have a lot of people that will actually say at town meeting, you know, it really doesn't matter to me, I'm paying based on income. Exactly. Well, if we're losing, if we're so losing it's almost counts. like Governor Scott didn't do us a favor last year. He'd have done us a bigger favor if he'd saved the money and done it this year. And Let's then, not introduce that concept, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> sales concept. tax is up, so there might be some extra money. <laughs> so, anyways, so right. where I'm going is is is. For us to, to us, for us to maintain the exact same tax rate, we would have to ask the voters to move 480,000 out of reserves. But unfortunately, I really think that's wrong, and I don't think we should do that. I think what we need to do is say, hey, look, last year was an anomaly. You you had five and seven cents less because of um, because of money that the governor moved over, and if we do the the three hundred, we'll be right at what we would have been last year had the governor not moved the money, and we can still do this without having to change anything, and we can still go along and, and you know with a caveat can say that it's roughly the same as the tax is going to be last year. Um, it, by explaining the, the governor's buy down and really to go from we we moved our thing from 180 to 200 but because it's a a voice vote we can ask for a friendly amendment and tell the voters you know why we're doing this we can do the presentation I'll, I'll make the presentation better so that it's easier to understand Doesn't get any better than that but <laughs> Much better, thank you. Remember, I met with them at 12 o'clock, at 11.45, and Lori, had a, Lori shoehorned me into a meeting. I was her lunch date. I think that looks like you worked on it. So, so I, think, somebody prepare it for you. I think we can go to, to, this, to, the, to the budget meetings, to the, the Wardsboro annual meeting, and, and explain it. And I think what we should do is, the other problem is, if we keep it down artificially low again this year, and something changes again next year, we're going to fight harder and harder every year to keep it right where it's at. Um, I mean, one of the things we've always done in Dover is we say our article for transferring money from the, the reserve is to shoot for a tax rate, not so much to for a number. But we always put a cap on it because we don't want to be, you know, we don't want to get all the money moved out all in one year. So my thought is, is we're okay moving forward the only thing I thought we may do is a letter from Rick and I. I may just add a par take a paragraph out of something and add a paragraph just explaining um, that although we're looking at a slight tax increase this year, it's really no more than if the governor hadn't moved the money last year. And um, we hope that people understand 
the reason behind it because for us to keep it artificially low is going to draw down the reserves much quicker than we we would like to see or something along i mean the honest truth is that last year was one year money yeah. right. the one year money goes away that's what you have and you have you don't really have that i like this one year money it's one year money yeah. it's like grand money right yeah you know? so what's our total total reserves now uh somewhere around a million dollars Oh, we're well, over a million, isn't it? Yeah. That's a or money. Or, that, that's a word I'd like to stay so. away from at any meeting, okay? Just because people say, well, give it all back to us. And the well, problem is there's, there's a, a shot, negative so impact. We're giving 30% of it back in one year. 30, well, we, we in Dover always use the third. But if you go over a certain, so remember, if we put all million in, we may only buy the tax rate down nine cents. Where if we put 300,000 in, because oh, after you get to a certain number, um, the state's figuring, you know, with the money they give us, there's a certain amount that we need to spend per pupil. So if we buy down to go under $10,000 or whatever the yield is and the grants, then we're really just giving money back to the state. What, what, what are we, uh, was 280, we went over 280 to 3? No, we were going to ask for 200. The, art, the article yeah, we for submitted for the meeting in Warsboro, we were going to ask for 200. And now? Now we're going to ask. We will have to amend it from the floor. So if we were to move, if we kept everything as is, do we have a tax rate if we just did 200 instead of the three? Oh, we did have that. What was well, it? Was what we, that was what we originally did, right? Well, it's another four cents higher than... We had 180 before. 180, yeah. uh, but, but we, the, our, the warning is up to 200. It's up to 200. Right. It, and that was what we, Lori thought, and, and when she talked with us, it made a lot of sense. That gave us that little bit of wiggle room if it was one student off or two students off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep you updated as I find out more information. Um, so that, I mean, the budget won't change necessarily, and at some point we'll have to publish some sort of tax rate uh, as an estimate. And we also need to, um, I don't know if the warning for the per pupil cost is gone. Yeah. So, because that was based on the 282 as well, but so you know what? At the time we did it, yep. that was our bet. And if the state doesn't like it, then the state can make sure next year they present. Yeah. And we'll just say you guys chose to ignore a part of the law. So did we. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but don't we think ignore it. No, we did what we knew. <laughs> I don't think it'll be an we issue because exactly. this came up at Vasbo as well, and it was basically everybody was saying the same thing. What are we supposed to put in there? We have no idea. You know. And so it's, it's yeah. And I so tell you guys, I've worked with Brad James a lot, especially when Act 60 first came out. I think the guy is one of the best assets the state yeah. has. And I, I don't, it's not like I'm trying to throw him under the bus, but I get angry when, you know, we have laws and, and for whatever reason, whatever, whoever, wherever the ball falls, you know, they knew that the Ed Department needed help and, you know, they should have done, you know, like we did. We've got, you know, we gave Lori some extra help during this transition. So that, because we knew it was going to be difficult, you know, they, they should have done the same thing and, and maybe that should have been part of Act 46 is that the, the Ed Department gets some additional resources. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, sometimes we hate to give additional resources because then they use them for other things like studies that have four school districts. What I just, I want to just echo you because I, you know, would like to be on camera to say this, that Brad, actually, when I got those numbers on the 9th and I started freaking out too, I, he was very responsive to me, um, which was really great. And it's just that I feel for the guy. I mean, I don't have anybody else to call and nobody else has anybody else to call. So he, he was very responsive and good to And me. I wouldn't take his job for $10 million for a year. No. I don't know, just <clears throat> so next year we're going from eight cents to six cents. I, I understand your thinking. I think we could sell that. That definitely makes sense. Obviously, it was artificially lowered by the governor. So we're putting three hundred thousand in this year. Next year we lose the two cents. Budgets don't go down; they go up. So we can't sustain moving three hundred thousand or that amount in on a yearly basis. So at what point do we start lowering it or adjusting I, I, the budget? So my thought is, is that, and again, you know, you guys, we decide as a group, my only suggestion after playing with budgets for 20 some odd years mm -hmm. is that we're going, we're doing a budget. We have no clue how it's going to turn out because it's a brand it's new entity. Yeah. I think Dwight, next year budgets are going to be a little bit easier because Lori's not going to be concentrating on closing out 10 budgets, 
and doing brand new budgets, she'll have some time under her belt. Her office will. I'm hoping that we have the transportation people looking at some different changes. Um, you know, Wyndham Central is looking at doing some stuff for the special ed, so maybe that we can save some money there. I think that next year we're going to spend a lot more time looking at budgets because we're going to have, although we won't have a full year, we'll have a part of a year to be able to look at numbers and see, but it's probably two years down the road until we at least have a full year to look at plus whatever the the Wardsboro school focus is and that's going to make some you know some difference too maybe whatever focus we're looking at the money we thought we needed for professional development we don't need as much or maybe um, we can change things around we don't know what's going to happen um, you know we've got a new school choice policy we don't know what's going to happen with that I think there's still a lot of balls in the air so I think to just help settle it that's why my recommendation would be to go to the 300 this year the other thing we're going to have is you're going to finish your study on the reserve studies and then we'll be able to assign money to the reserve that we know we need to save for the buildings and transportation will hopefully be done so we can if we need to reserve money for that and then hopefully the two administrators will know what, what new equipment's needed for the new programs and then that way we can more settle and take that reserve and assign it where we, where we want and find out what reserves. So I think, and that was part, remember I said last meeting, we need a calendar to start, and that's what we need to do is to put on a calendar these right. dates. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's just that, you know, we were comfortable moving 180. Now mm -hmm. we're comfortable moving 300 um, for the same reasons you're talking about there. And for me, I think, you know, that 200 seemed like a better number. Yeah, it's going to go up. But that just seems like a big chunk to me. It's just my opinion. So, do you, are you suggesting that we not move? I think we should move two hundred and, and, and then absorb the, the other four cents in the tax rate. Whatever it is, it's not four cents. Whatever the tax. Well, rate no, it's about a penny cents. raises twenty five thousand, oh. so it's four cents. Yeah, because next year we're going to lose another two cents. It's going to be. I mean, I hear what you're saying, we, but it could go the other direction as well. It yeah. could be more expensive. But um, the other thing, hopefully next year the pupil thing won't be as big a drop. Because the hold harmless well, will be all based on the one year versus two years. It should be similar, wouldn't it? No, it should be about half. Uh, right? The, the funny thing is, Dwight, we actually have 14 more students, according to your numbers, mm -hmm. this year than we did last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's moving in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. We're getting penalized. <laughs> right. For, okay. It's actually 13 point something. I just worry about students. having next yeah, year ADM, sitting here sitting this yeah, room. So the radium one. went up, but right. Yeah. I just worry next year sitting this room. That's a big chunk. And next year, if we're in the same situation, we're going to be in a so, lot of hurt. So, uh, again, Dwight, this, we have plenty. As long as you guys are good with the concept of moving forward like we are, 200 to 300 is something we're going to discuss at, at, in an open session. Okay. And that's and we can decide maybe. So you want the, to warn the 300 and then discuss no, the number? No, it's, it's already warned at 200. The change the warning to 300? No, we ha we won't. Oh, you we'll won't? leave it at 200. Yeah. We will ask for an amendment if okay. that's the way we want to go. Mm -hmm. If You make some really good points, and I think Lori will have better numbers for us in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think at the next meeting, we're going to discuss this again okay. because we're going to present the, you know, to people what we're voting on, and we can have this discussion. And, and then at the next couple meetings before the annual meeting, right. We can feel people out, see what they think, mm -hmm. and if we're getting a lot of pushback that you know the the, the five cents and the four cents is too much, right. let's do two fifty. Then we can make an adjustment. Right. But I think remember we're going to have to ask for an amendment, right. and or we may decide that we don't want to ask for an amendment, leave it at the two, and you know roll the dice and see what happens. Right, because the, um, we also haven't done the uh, we're starting our mid year reconciliations for where we think that you know Wardsboro and Dover are going to come out right. so if they come out under budget then that's you know money, money, rolls back, money that rolls in okay. so then you don't have to move as much right right so, that's and that's another good point I forgot Lori and I discussed earlier too is is what right now when I talked to Marco at the Dover Treasurer's office and we were supposed to move the 200 roughly last year mm -hmm. you know for this year he hasn't had a movie yet, and yeah. his projections show that we may not have to. We haven't worked for last year. We moved 81, but we were under. Uh, you never used. You know the exact amount of money we were under right. 81. So I, I think <laughs> those so. are good points, too. Yeah. Okay. But again, what we've done in Dover is up to 300, and then we can have a discussion with the people and say, hey, look, you know, you can give us a tax rate you want us to shoot for. Mm -hmm. So when it when it all shows out and the legislature leaves and we have real numbers, when we go to file the report in, um, in May, we may be able to say to Lori, well look, to, 
to get that six cent increase that we discussed with the voters, we have to move 190, then we move the 190. Right. This is this is kind of an up to if and the can, pupil count changes, it'll this change this number. There's right. so many different variables that are you, you know, know CLAs change. Yeah, the well, CLA is actually is it set. set? Yeah. So that will change, <laughs> okay. as one far thing, as I know. But that's set. the yeah. only so thing at this point. Um, the yield can change, but the yield can change. The tax rate can change. The legislature could say, "Would well, the base tax rate is too high and drop it two cents," and that helps us. Listen, but they could also raise. They could it also two raise cents. it six cents. Yeah. Right, right. Help us. Yeah, so we're in a good position too. I mean, we're lucky to have the, the reserve. So. Which right. a lot of schools. A lot of schools don't. don't and can, that's what Laura can't sleep at night. I don't think. <laughs> Sorry. No, but I, I understand too, and I'm, I'm, I would stuff. not want to be in her seat. I would want to be in her seat. She's got all those other towns. Yeah. And, you so. know, how is it affecting them? Yeah. Okay. So is everybody comfortable? I mean, Sounds not good. comfortable. Does everybody have a basic understanding and mm -hmm. and feel that you could we we know at our next meeting we're going to spend some more time on this. Lori had a really nice sheet she made up for West River, but I didn't want her to waste her time today doing it. I wanted to see she'll get that for us at the next meeting. We can discuss this more. I just want to make sure that you guys were okay with sending out. We asked that as soon as we saw this, we asked Anita to hold that pamphlet. Yeah. So is every. I just wanted to know if I, if you want, if you would like to direct me to change the, um, the presentation that is uploaded. So not yet. That's not yet. Okay. Let's have that discussion at the next meeting. Okay, that's fine. I, I just because I didn't like I said you got a lot. And I'd like to get you out of here as soon as you can so you can get ready for your next one. I have to go to the West River tonight. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, at the next meeting, we'll plan on, on having a discussion and we'll set up our presentations for the annual meeting and for the, the next couple um, meetings. I think we meet in Dover on the 28th. So that, Lori, that'll give us lots of time. We'll have like three weeks. Mm. Yeah. To get, see what our numbers. Well, I mean. I, hope, I mean, we better have correct numbers by then. You know, like because you still don't have um, the other thing they don't have is the uh, career centers count yeah. either, and that affects us. That's mm -hmm. right. I mean, it's kind of money in, money out, but it still it changes things a little bit. Good. So is great. that? Yeah, it's great, Laura. I, I just would like to say that uh, the waiting study is supposed to be completed by November two thousand and nineteen. And this is just another demonstration of, you know, this is happening all throughout rural Vermont where we are losing population and still dealing with a very unfair and inequitable funding formula that has been here since the inception of Act 60. So hopefully that waiting study will find that there is a need for a rural wait and we will see some relief for our students and taxpayers next year. Here, here. God bless. So we're good with sending the booklet out as it is with the exception of Rick and I. We'll mm -hmm. do our best to just change, that, change a paragraph and just say because of um, student counts and hold harmless, we find that we're not gonna be able to maintain the same tax rate but we will be close. Please come to the meetings to fully understand. I think, yeah, managing expectations is really important, Rich, and helping people understand that there is an element of fluidity that the board and the supervisory union have no control over. Um, and so it's very important for people to come to the meetings to have the latest information. Wow. You break that down. I think perhaps our friend Lauren may have typed it for you. Can you email me that? <laughs> okay. You and I just need to let's take two minutes at the end of the meeting. Okay, is there anything else that I and I know I, I appreciate you guys coming out on short notice. I just thought this was very important to get out in the public. I, I'd like to appreciate that our on site guy came to videotape us too. Still in here. Right. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lori. And um, and then we'll you know on the twenty eighth we'll meet again and hopefully be able to have a better feel, Dwight, for what number we should yeah, discuss. That's great. that's great. Okay. Cool. What else is on our agenda? That's it. That crayon for you.
Okay, can I get, can you guys, um, it's purple, Richard. Cool. Can you, can you tell that it's purple? <laughs> no, it's black. Oh, Very the label's cool. black. Okay. So 28th in Dover, 4th in Wards run in the annual meeting. So we only got a couple meetings to get this before the annual. Um, that's it. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. So moved. Dwight seconds it. Yep. What time is it, Bill, on that clock? 5.02. Okay. Very productive meeting. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, is Dover meeting here?